Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's Monday, it's nine o'clock, it's time for a five by five. This is where I take five subjects related to magic, I spend five minutes talking about each subject, and then move on to the next subject. It's quick, it's snappy, you never know what you're going to get. Now, about three weeks ago, I did a force tutorial special where I taught five different forces that you can use with a pack of cards that you might not have seen before. Feedback on that video was great, so today we're going to be doing another video like that, but this time it's one that you guys have requested. It's five forces, sorry, five controls. So it's a five control tutorial special. I'm going to go through five of my favorite controls that you might not have seen before, and I'm going to go through exactly how they work. Because let's be honest, most magicians do the same control over and over again. It's normally a running cut to the break, right? And people do that because it works. But, you know, there's so many better controls out there and so many controls that you might not have seen that have different advantages depending on the environment you're in. Well, in this video, I'm going to go through five of my favorite controls. Now, I could do another four or five videos on controls if I wanted to. So let me ask you a question. Is this the sort of thing you want to see more of? Would you like to see a follow-up 5x5 five five where I go through another five controls? Because I can do that if you want to. By the way, these five controls are one of about 30 or 40 controls that are actually on the Netrix. So if you do want to have access to a ton more controls, more, more than just the five I'm going to go through here. Just uh, have a look at the Netrix because we've got a ton of slights on there anyway. But without further ado, let's have a look at five controls that you might not have seen before and teach you how they work. Okay, so let's have a look at the first uh, control that we're going to be talking about right now. The first control is an old control from David Acker. And I think this was in Random Acts of Magic. Don't see anyone doing this, but it's a really cool control. Have a look at this. Uh, Jack, I've got, a, uh, I've got a pack of cards. Yeah. And I'm going to have you pick one of them. So I'm going to give the cards a mix up. I'm going to bevel the cards like this, my friend, okay? okay? And as I riffle down the deck, I just want you to say stop anytime you want to. Stop. Right there, you sure? So we've got the two of diamonds. You cool with that one? Yep. I'm going to pop that two right there. Is that fair? That's fair. It's about halfway down, right? About halfway down? Give or take. Yeah, but obviously it's now on the bottom of the deck. Huh? So let's, let's talk about how this works. It's a really fun control. Now, there's upsides and downsides to this. The upside is it looks really fair. Even though it's a little bit discrepant, it looks really fair. The downside is in order for you to be able to do the control, you have to be able to, uh, you have to see the card because the, the card has to be picked from a face-up beveled deck. So if you're doing a trick where you don't, you're meant to not know the identity of the card, this is not a control to go for. But if, you, if that's not an issue, then uh, this is great. And to be honest, pretty much every time I do a trick and I don't know the identity of the card, this is the perfect control to use. So let's go through how this works. Um, you spread the cards out like this. You're going you're gonna to hold the deck and you're going to bevel it like that. Okay, so you're just going to bevel the deck. And that's, that bevel is going to allow you to riffle your thumb down the deck like this. Okay, so your thumb is going to uh, basically riffle down the deck. So you bevel the deck face up and you just say, look, I'm going to have you pick a card. Just say stop. And you, uh, it doesn't matter where they stop, to be perfectly honest, but I like to time it so the stop about halfway down. Um, so let's say they say stop there. Wherever they say stop, all of the cards above where they've stopped, you're going to move over to the right slightly. And uh, then you just re-grip the deck. So you're moving your thumb from here to here. And the reason you're moving your thumb from here to here is if I don't move my thumb, because I've broken that bevel, those cards are going to fall over like that. And you don't want this. So once you've beveled and you've said, say, stop, let's say, the same, well, I've got the same place. They say stop there. You move your thumb over here to hold everything in place. And you say, the king of hearts, are you happy with this? And they're going to say, yes. You then re-grip the deck with the right hand. The thumb goes underneath, the fingers go on top. You grab everything and you turn everything over end for end like this. Now, the, the king is actually there, but, you, but they lose track of which one the king is, which one isn't. And in the continuing action, you just take all of the cards above the step off into your left hand. You then deal this card off as you say, look, I'm going to put your king right there. Now, that is not the king. That's an indifferent card. But you pull that off as if it's the king. And then you drop these cards on top. You then just square up like this. And it feels really fair. It feels like there's no control. But that card is now on the bottom of the deck. Now, this is a discrep there is obviously a massive discrepancy here. Because when you do this and you do this, they see the card face up. And then when you turn over... 
you're taking a completely different card. But nobody ever notices that. And, you know, if you've never tried moves like that before, give them a go. Because honestly, they fly past everybody every single time. But that's the control. So one more time in full speed, you shuffle the cards. You have somebody uh, say stop from a beveled spread. So you just bevel the cards out and you say, Jack, just say stop. Stop. Right there, the five of hearts. You happy with that one? Yep. Perfect. I'm going to pop the five right there, leave it down in the middle, just like that. And in that action, it's already controlled to the bottom. So there you go. That is the first control. Um, it's by David Acker, and it's a really fun control to do. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so this next control uh, is by Steve Bedwell. Now, Steve Bedwell is one of my favorite magicians. I remember watching his Walkman act from years ago and just falling in love with him and falling in love with the style that he, he performs with. He's just, for me, such an engaging performer. If you've not seen his Walkman act, uh, it's one of the best close-up acts in, in ever, in my opinion. Uh, let me show it you. So this is what the uh, the control looks like. It's a very fair looking control. So Jack, I'm going to have you uh, just say stop anytime you want to. Stop. That card right there. Yep. Um, Okie dokie. So this is the uh, the card. Doesn't matter whether I see it. The Queen of Hearts. Are you happy with that one? I love the Queen. Just say stop. Stop. Okay. I'm going to put the card here. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that Queen and bury it down into the middle of the deck a little bit more. I'm going to bury it down in there. I'm going to put these cards on top. So that card really is lost in the deck. Is that fair? Can't get further than that. In actual fact, it's on top. Oh. So that's Steve Bedwell's control. It's a really fun control. Now, it's based on the Rubber Dub Dub Vanish. Now, if you don't know the Rubber Dub Dub Vanish, this is the Rubber Dub Dub Vanish. And there's variations where you hold it in an angle. But the basic Rubber Dub Dub Vanish is you take a card like the Queen, you put it under your hand, you rub it, and it vanishes. Okay, now I'm not going through all the various variations that have come out since. This is the original Rubber Dub Dub Vanish. How this works, you're going to need to know this in order to understand the control. The card is side jogged for over half of its length, held in place with the thumb. And the action is you're just going to pull that card back onto the deck. So the thumb just pulls the card onto the deck. Now that happens as you cover the hand so uh, over, the, over the card. So you, you have the card, Queen in this case, and you say, I'm going to put it underneath my hand. And as I put it under my hand... In slow motion, what's happening is that card just gets pulled back. But the larger action of all of this happening hides the smaller action of the card getting pulled back. And you can use feint, so you can actually put it under there the first time and then rub some dust away and do it the second time. And lots of different variations. But that's the, um, that's the rubber dub dub vanish. Now, this control uses kind of like the same sort of uh, action of pulling that card back, but in a completely different context. So let's say they've picked a card um, and you don't know what the card is. Um, that's one of the advantages with this card. It fe th this control feels really haphazard. So you're going to uh, dribble down to about the halfway point and you're going to have the card put back and you can actually show it them at that point and say, look, there's the card. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to dribble these cards onto the table like this. OK, so these cards just get dribbled onto the table like that. Now, as the cards are getting dribbled onto the table, all you're going to do is apparently throw this card into the dribble. Now, in reality, you're just going to pull that card back on top of the deck. But nobody sees that because of all of the cards going everywhere. You can't see it. So in full speed. It looks like this. You just have the card put back here and you go, look, you know what? We'll leave that card somewhere down in the uh, in in the uh, in, in, in these cards. And I've just pulled it back so it doesn't actually go into these cards. It just looks like it does because they see the card here. It's very difficult to do in slow motion. But, you know, you're dribbling here. This goes in. You pull back. And because the cards go everywhere, it really feels like the card's gone in. You then dribble these on top as well. And when you square up, the card's on top of the deck. So it's a really easy control to do. All you have to do is this. If you can pull the card back like that, you can do the control. So that's all you have to do. You just have to pull the card back. You do it at full speed. It really looks very deceptive. One of the things is you can actually do this into a spectator's hand as well. So if you're doing this walk around, you can have the spectators cup their hands together and you can have this spectators holding their card and you say, look, I tell you what, pop your card there for me. And, uh, and you have someone cut their hands together and you say, I'm going to leave this in this packet. 
and you just do it into their hands and you do this on top and it feels completely hands-free. It feels like there's absolutely no way you could have controlled that card, but you and I both know it's already on top of the deck. So that's the second control. We can thank Steve Bedwell for that one. It's a really great control to use. It works in uh, walk around. It's it, it really it's so versatile. It works in walk around, works with tables, works everywhere. It's angle proof. It really looks very, very deceptive. It's even, you can even incorporate it into an ambitious card sequence. It looks that good. So that's, um, that's the second control. Uh, let's have a look at the third control right okay, now. This is a third control. This is an old Harry Lorraine Force that also has uh, brilliant adaptations as a, uh, as a control as well. Let me show it to you. So um, I've got a deck of cards and I've got uh, Jack behind the camera and he's gonna help me with this. So Jack, I'm gonna have you just say stop. Stop. The nine of clubs, are you okay with that one? Yep. You happy, yeah? Got the nine. Right, if you're happy, I'm happy. I'm gonna leave it about halfway down. A fair about halfway? Yep. And now not only have I controlled that card, but it's face up at the bottom of the deck. How'd I get that? Well, this is this is based on a on a on a force, right? So this is based on uh, on, on a force um, that I first saw Harry Relaine, Lorraine. Sorry, I first saw Harry Lorraine do, and it's a way of forcing the bottom card. So if you've got the nine of diamonds on the bottom, you can have someone touch a card, and whatever card they touch is the original bottom card. So to go through this force very briefly, um, and then I'll show you the uh, the way that we've adapted it to a control. You just spread through the cards, and they touch one in around about the middle. When they touch a card, you take it so it's the bottom card of the right-hand packet sticking out to the left slightly. So it's left, it's uh, it's side jogged. Like that. no, sorry, no, you don't ignore me. You spread through to about the center. The card they touch is on the is on the left-hand packet. I'm very sorry. The card they touch is on the left-hand packet. Now all that's going to happen is it's going to look like you flip the deck over and just out jog that card. In reality, what's going to happen is the right hand comes over to the left hand and the fingers touch the bottom card of the pack, which is the force card, the nine of diamonds. And all you're gonna do is just going to hold on to that packet there between the middle finger and the, uh, the ring finger. And you're just gonna allow all of those cards above that bottom card to flip over, which leaves the, the original bottom card sticking out in the same position. You put that card there out jogged and you flip everything over. And in full speed, it's very deceptive. So they touch a card, let's say they touch this one, uh, you just leave it sticking out like this and you force the nine of diamonds. It's a great force. Now you can actually use this as a control. In order to use it as a control, you've got to reverse a card on top of the deck. Now the easiest way to do that is the brow reversal. So very briefly, you're gonna get a break below the top card with your thumb. You're gonna undercut the bottom half of the deck, turn it face up, then undercut the rest of the cards, turn them face up, so in other words, you turn the deck face up, but you've got one card down here at the bottom that's reversed, and uh, and and that that card doesn't matter what it is. That's a dummy card, okay? Um, but that's how I'd reverse it. You can reverse the card any way you wanted to. When I did the performance, I just turned a card over and I had the deck face up. But if you want to, uh, if you want to have the deck shuffled first or something, and you want to actually reverse a card um, as you're apparently giving the cards a cut and showing that they're all okay. The brow reversal is a great way to do it. Now, it's exactly the same as the force, but you're using it as a control. So you spread through, you have them touch a card. Let's say they touch the five of diamonds. You flip that card face down. So you use the right-hand packet to flip that card face down. You then do the exact same actions of the, con of the force earlier. So these fingers go underneath. The middle finger and the ring finger are going to touch the bottom packet here like this. And in slow motion, you're going to allow everything above the bottom card to flip over and then you put that card there and you flip these cards here so it looks like they've touched a card and you've left it face down in the middle of the deck in reality that's that dummy card that you reversed and their card is face up at the bottom of the pack right there okay so in full speed let's say you've already reversed the card look how deceptive this looks jack name a card a ton of diamonds that one right there, are you sure? Yep. I tell you what I'll do, I'll leave that sticking out the pack right there. So you can see it really is no cheating going into the middle of the deck. And in that action, I've controlled the card to the bottom and I've reversed it in that position as well. So it does an awful lot with just one move. So it's uh, an adaptation of a Harry Lorraine Force. It's a really fun way to control the card and reverse it at the same time. 
Now let's start off with, that we're gonna go on to now, my favorite control, my absolute favorite control that I do all the time. Uh, we're gonna look at that one right now. Okay, so the next force is the Slipstream Control by Troy Hooser. In my opinion, this is the best force in the world. Uh, now this control, I encourage you to check out Troy Hooser's work because there are so many adaptations of this control. You can use it for sandwich plots, you can use it for collectors, uh, you can use it in so many different ways. I'm going to show you the basic use of it, which is to control the card second from top of the deck. Now, when you when you want to control the card second from top of the deck, most people use tilt, right? They use the tilt or the, uh, uh, the depth illusion, and there's nothing wrong with that. It has its place, but in my opinion, um, uh, the slipstream control is much better. So it looks like this. Um, Jack, you're going to uh, touch a card. So uh, when you're behind the camera. Just say stop anytime you want to. Stop. Right there. Are you, are you sure you want uh, you want this card here? I yeah. Want that card. Let me uh, show it you. There it is. Can you see it? Hey. Cool. You got it. Yeah. I'm going to leave that card. Roughly, how many cards down in the pack would you say that card is? About fifteen or twenty. About fifteen, twenty. I'm just going to push it in like that. Gone. Right. And in that action, second from the top is the card that you picked. The Ace of Spades in this case. So it's called a Slipstream Control by Troy Hooser. Uh, it's very similar to the Convincing Control. I'm, in this video, I'm not going to go through the Convincing Control. Um, but the Convincing Control, which you should look into, controls a card to the bottom of the deck, right? And Gary Jones' Top Con Control controls the card to the top of the deck. So the top con control is like this, and we can do videos on these in the future. Um, but the slipstream control controls the card second from top. So let me explain how it works. You're gonna uh, have a card picked, and you wanna really go for the middle of the deck, but it's totally up to you where really. Um, when they take the card or they look at the card, that's fine. So in this case, we've got the King of Clubs. Now you're gonna put the card back in somewhere in the middle. Then you're gonna break the spread at around about the halfway point. If you want them to say stop, they can do, that's fine. But you break the spread somewhere in the halfway point. And notice the right-hand packet, the bottom card of the right-hand packet is side jogged to the left for uh, about a third of its length, right? You have this card put back here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna show it. And as you show it, you will line this card, the King of Clubs, the card they've picked, you align it with the card above it, this one right here. So you align these two cards together and you turn over and show, in this case, the King of Clubs, right? Now, what you're going to do, I'm going to pull this here. Can, can you see this, Jack? Yep. Underneath the spread, what's going to happen is your fingers, uh, well, first of all, your thumb is going to go here on the top of the double. So the left thumb goes on top of the double. The fingers here pull this card back. And in a continuing action, you move that card forward. So it looks like you're actually moving the selected card forward, but really you've switched it. The selected card is now there. That is a dummy card. So let me do that in full speed from the front. You say stop, and they put the card back there. You align, you show like that, and you apparently put it forward, but in reality it's now there. Now this is where the sneakiest thing comes in. You're not really gonna cull this card. It's not gonna be a cull. What you're gonna do, it starts the same way as a cull. So you're now gonna spread the left-hand cards and insert the left-hand cards between the actual selection and the dummy. So you, you, you insert there and you start to spread. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull off the top card of the packet. And I'll show you this from the other side in a minute. You're gonna pull off the top card of the packet, taking the selected card with it, and then you carry on pushing off blocks of cards underneath. So let me do that again for you. There's the King of Clubs. From the top, you have the put card put back there, you align it with the card above it, you show it, you up jog the dummy card. These cards are inserted between the actual selection and the dummy, and then notice my left thumb grips this packet, so my right hand can take off the top card and the selection, so this is the selected card, and then in a continuing action, continues to take clumps of cards. And the reason for doing that is so you can say, how many cards down would you say your card is? Let me do it in full speed for you. Jack, say stop. Stop. Right there, you sure? Yep. I'm gonna pop that card, the King of Clubs, yeah? I'm going to pop it here. Now, roughly how many cards down in the pack would you say the card is, roughly? About 20. About 20. And in that action, it's done. So it's, it's, it's more difficult control. It requires practice. Uh, but it's not like a colour or anything. It's very easy to do. 
in terms of it, it just requires practice in order to um, make it look smooth. So there's the upjog of the dummy card. This is the bit that you need practice with. So this spread goes here in between the dummy card and the actual selection. And then you pull off in the same action. Notice my fingers have gone in between the selection and the rest of the deck. That makes it very easy to pull that card off along with the top card as I then continue to pull cards off. Okay, so again, I'll do it one more time in full speed. Um, let's put the card back there. Jack, do you see that King of Clubs? I do. I'm going to leave it, I don't know, about halfway down. Would you say it's about halfway? Yep. Perfect. It looks like it's been lost in the deck. And in reality, it's second from top. So uh, there you go. That is uh, the Slipstream Control. I really encourage you to check out all of Troy Hooser's work, his two books, Destroyers and Moments, which uh, I don't know if they're available from Vanishing Ink at the moment, but they... Uh, uh, they, they were published by Vanishing Inc. Those two books are incredible. It, uh, anything that you can find of True, Troy Hooser's, you should really buy um, because it, it's, it's exceptional thinking. And this specifically, he has so many applications of the slipstream control. It's really worth looking into. Okay, so this is the final control. And uh, this, I never see magicians using this as a control. And it surprises me because it's a great control, but I don't think a lot of close-up magicians think of this as a control. I learned this, uh, it, it's really more commonly used in an ambitious card routine. And I actually learned this from Daryl's DVD on ambitious card moves many, many years ago through L&L &L Publishing. Daryl brought out a, uh, a DVD all about the ambitious card. It was all different moves that you can use with the ambitious card routine. And I remember looking at this move and thinking that would make such a great control. And it does, um, it really does. Uh, you know, like sometimes you perform for those groups of people and they're very skeptical and you want to do everything so that there's no doubt that what you're doing is what you say you're doing. This is the perfect control to use in that environment where you want to really put the focus on the card going down in the middle of the deck. Let me show you. Um, it uses, obviously, a deck of cards and uh, you're going you're gonna, to uh, pick a card for me, Jack. It doesn't really matter if I see it. So we'll, uh, uh, anyone you like the look of? So the uh, Jack. Jack of Hearts, that yep. one right there. You sure? Yep. Okay. Now, you could have picked any card, but you picked the Jack of Hearts. You happy with that one? Yep. Good. I'm going to uh, pop that card about halfway down. <clears throat> I went to see. There it goes, about halfway down, right? Yep. Um, and you know what? I, I want it to go slightly further to the bottom, so I'm going to put it more towards the bottom of the deck. And I want you to see it really does go more towards the bottom of the deck. Is that fair? I'm fairer than that. And now it's on top of the deck. So that's, that's the move, and it's such a great move. Now, you're going to need a double to do this. Now, the way that I just did that is do a brow reversal. So earlier on, I talked about the brow reversal. You can do uh, a brow, how I, did the, how I did the actual selection uh, earlier, is I did a brow reversal like this. So in other words, I'm reversing a dummy card on the, on the uh, top of the deck. And then I had Jack name a card, let's say he said the Ace of Clubs, and I just turned that card over and I put it underneath the deck. So in other words, I'm now set to do a double lift. Now you can do that if you want to. You could literally just have, uh, you know, like a card on top of the deck. You can have them touch a card and you could have that card taken out and you could show it them like this. Uh, which would also be a force. You know, there's lots of different ways. Ultimately, you're going to need that card held as a you need two cards as one basically so the way to do it with a free selection is to uh is to just do a brow re reversal have them touch a card when they touch a card you flip it over and you put it at the bottom of the deck and you're done obviously the disadvantage with that version is you have to see the card that's being selected but there are ways of doing it without doing that the point is this is the control so you're going to grab the two cards and t uh turn them face down uh, and take them off as one card, holding them in biddle grip. So you're holding them in biddle grip as one card. You're now going to need to re-grip this card. And the easiest way to re-grip it is to lay the double on top of the deck, grip it with the uh, left hand. So you've got the double gripped with the left hand here. And then the right hand can take that card from the outer end like this, holding these two cards as one. And then you just riffle down with your thumb, putting the two cards into the middle of the deck like that right? So you just put the two cards into the middle of the deck. You can now flash and show that that's still the same card. And that's the beautiful part of this routine. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to use your middle finger to push that card in. 
and then your forefinger is going to pull it in the rest of the way. Okay, so let's just take this double here and you'll see. So let's say the card is the seven of hearts. You can show it going into the middle of the deck. You can then just adjust it. And now they still think that's the same card, but the card is actually there. Okay, now at that point, all you're going to do is with your left forefinger, you're going to pull this lower packet back, take the top half of the bottom packet and just cut it on top as if you're saying, hey, I'm going to cut that card further down into the deck. You square up and then the card's on top of the deck. So in full speed, very, very quickly in full speed, let's just say we've got uh, this card here, the seven of hearts. The card goes down into the middle. You show it and you adjust it and you say, look, I'm going to cut that card a little bit further down into the deck. They can now push the card in themselves and it looks like it's lost. But in reality, the card's right there on top of the deck. Um, it's by Daryl. It's used for an ambitious card. But man, you can use this in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be as an ambitious card. You can use it in so many different ways. It's a really great control. So there you go, guys. That's the five control tutorial special. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like I said earlier on, if you do want to have access to tons of controls, along with about 300 tricks and 200 slides or more, go to the Netrix, www.thenetrix.com. You can access the Netrix immediately and get full access, uh, see what all the fuss is about, see why so many people are joining. If you want to see another video like this on Magic TV, that's fine. I'll do another video. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be back again soon with another video. Thanks for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.